Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, the Brankio Pod Lab. Today, I'll be sharing the detailed process I use to pre-hatch fairy shrimp from the genus Eubrankopus. Before diving into the content, I want to take a moment to thank all of you who support this channel. Your engagement, whether it's through likes, shares, or comments, not only helps this content reach a broader audience, but also keeps this project moving forward. My goal is to continue creating videos like this, and eventually, dedicate myself to this work full time. Now let's get into it. Fairy shrimp from the genus Eubrankopus are fascinating creatures that require very specific environmental conditions to hatch. If these conditions are not met, their eggs remain dormant within the soil, sometimes for years. This dormancy makes it difficult to identify whether populations of fairy shrimp are present in certain habitats, especially those in the southern United States where warmer and drier conditions can limit their emergence. In such cases, suitable vernal pools or ephemeral wetlands may house these shrimp, but you wouldn't know unless the conditions allow them to hatch. To address this, I use a method I refer as the SARS method, which involves examining soil samples during the dry season to detect fairy shrimp eggs. This begins with collecting soil from the habitat in question. Once I have a sample, I process the soil using a series of fine meshes. The goal here is to sift out large debris and isolate the finer soil particles. In my experience, Eubrankova's eggs tend to sink, making them easier to separate from the lighter material like organic matter or silt. I first remove the larger particles, then use an ultra-fine mesh to filter out the smaller particles, such as silt and clay. What remains is a fine-grained sample containing the eggs. First, I take small amounts of soil and dilute them in the peachy dish by adding water. I mix the sample thoroughly to ensure that the soil is evenly dispersed throughout the water, avoiding any clumps or excessive concentrations that might obscure the view. Once the mixture is uniform, I carefully place the peachy dish just beneath my dissecting scope. From this position, I can maneuver around through the debris and meticulously scanning every section for eggs. These eggs are relatively easy to identify under the microscope due to their distinct coloration, typically yellow, orange, or brown, which in contrast well with darker soils. Using a fine tip brush, I carefully isolate the eggs and transfer them into a vial of water. Labeling is essential at this stage. So I make sure to document the species and the date that the eggs were collected. The vial is in place in a spot with indirect sunlight at room temperature for about a month. After this initial period, I prepare a peachy dish for the next stage of the process, which involves cold storage. I label the petri dish with the species name and date, add a thin layer of water, and transfer the eggs into the dish using a pipette. This dish is then sealed and stored in the fridge at around 4 degrees Celsius for about 30 to 90 days. During this cold storage phase, the eggs undergo pre-hatching. In my experience, some eggs begin to crack after approximately 30 days, and the embryos start to emerge. It's worth noting that Eubrankopus fairy shrimp have a unique developmental process. Unlike many other species, their embryos do not fully hatch and swim immediately upon exposure to water. Instead, they emerge from their eggs while still encased in a membrane. This membrane continues to provide protection as they develop further. The stage at which they emerge, known as the metanopolis stage, is more developed than the nopolis stage seen in other fairy shrimp. At this point, they clearly have defined eyes, limbs, and other structures. In this specimen I'm working with, the eyes are currently red, but over the coming weeks, they will darken and become even more distinct. The development process continues until they mature enough to rupture the membrane. I'll be covering the triggers for this final hatching stage, as well as the timeline for further development in a follow-up video. For now, this concludes the overview of my pre-hatching process. Thank you for watching and for your continued support of my channel. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please consider liking, commenting, 
and sharing it. Your feedback and engagement go a long way in helping me share the incredible world of Brain Cure Pods. So don't forget to subscribe for updates, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.